Hey friends, it's Jessie and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the video I am most excited to film this year. I have been waiting to film this video since the beginning of the year. In fact, I think I've been waiting for this video since last Christmas, thinking about how much I wanted to film this video this Christmas. If you couldn't tell by the title or my enthusiasm, I am ready to sit down and film my rankings of all the palettes I tried in 2022. There are a couple honorable mentions, which I will mention at the beginning, but according to my list, I have about 42 palettes that I tried this year. So if you're interested in seeing which palettes I tried this year and how I would rank them, then just keep watching. Like I said, I have two honorable mention palettes to talk about and they are honorable mentions for two completely different reasons. The first palette I have is the Charlotte Tilbury quad in the shade Walk of No Shame. And this is a very pretty quad. I got this in the spring of this year and I've really enjoyed it. However, it is an honorable mention because I, like I said, have redone this ranking four or five times already and I realized I forgot it and I wasn't about to redo the entire list just to accommodate a quad. So honorable mention. And then the other honorable mention I have is my ColourPop Back to Hogwarts palette. And this one is an honorable mention just because I feel like I haven't used it enough to give an honest ranking about it. I've only used some of the warm tone shades and I really wanted to make sure I was using all the shades before I put it in the ranking. So this is also an honorable mention. If you guys want to see more thoughts on either of these, let me know. I'd be happy to do more videos about these. But with that, let's go ahead and start at the bottom. I have 42 palettes, give or take, to talk about, but only 38 slots, and you'll see why. I ranked a couple together because they were either smaller palettes or they just went together, but coming in at 38, the bottom slot and the worst palette I tried all year. This unfortunately goes to the Rem Beauty palette in the shade Go Go Boots, and I enjoyed the color story of this. However, I did not enjoy the quality. I felt like for the color story, it is... Definitely out of all the REM palettes, the one that spoke to me the most. I was super excited about it. I was super excited about this aqua shade and the lavender and the rose gold. But I really felt like when I used it, it just did not give me the color payoff that I was looking for. The shades were very patchy and chalky. I did use this in a trying REM beauty video, which I will link all corresponding videos in the description below if you want to go check out any of these palettes. But I was sorely disappointed with this. It just is not the vibe. I feel like I've tried to reach for it maybe once or twice since I tried it in the spring. But overall, it just is so lackluster to me. It was definitely not worth the price that I paid for it. At 37, we have the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. And I really like the Urban Decay formula. I know it's not everyone's favorite. It doesn't pack as much punch as a lot of other formulas do. It's a lot more wearable. And sometimes I just want an easy to use wearable everyday eyeshadow palette, especially when I'm getting ready for work and don't have a lot of time. They're just really easy to blend out. However, this palette just really disappointed me. It is called the Wild Greens palette, but the greens were probably the least exciting shades out of this entire palette. I do like the two mattes. They don't pull true to tone on the skin and I really felt like the warm neutral mattes just weren't anything to write home about. I can probably count on one hand the number of times I have reached for this palette after I initially tried it and it just is not not a fave. Coming in at number 36 is the ColourPop Enchanted palette. This was their holiday palette that was I believe an Ulta exclusive. It was very cute, purple tones, obviously right up my alley. I love pink and purple eyeshadow. They are some of my favorites to wear, but this palette just really lacked quality to me. I haven't even used all of the shades yet, but I've used enough that I know I'm not a huge fan of this one. And the quality just isn't there for me. I know ColourPop can be hit or miss, and normally I really like ColourPop, but this palette just didn't do it for me. The shimmers were very lackluster. Even with the glitter glue, I felt like they didn't pack a punch, and they are not ColourPop's best. And the mattes, while they are beautiful, I just didn't feel like they were anything super special. And they did take a lot of blending. They were a little bit patchy, especially this deeper purple right here. It just was not a favorite for me. Beautiful color story. The packaging was gorgeous, but it just did not deliver. Coming in at number 35, we have the two ColourPop and Jasmine Chiswell Quints. These are two five pan palettes. This one is such a starlet. It is more pinky. And then we have Hello Hollywood, which is kind of cool tone mattes. 
I overall thought this collection wasn't bad, but it wasn't amazing. It was just kind of there, and for whatever reason, when I was ranking them, they just kind of fell towards the bottom of the pack. I really prefer the Hello Hollywood one. This one is a much more easy to use everyday palette. The mattes are really nice. The pop of blue is great for an inner corner. I think when I did my video reviewing these palettes, I used the blue on the lid. It was a really pretty palette and it's not bad. It's just not my fave. And then the pink one, I just haven't really cared to reach for this one. I've definitely reached for Hello Hollywood more. And I do like Jasmine Chiswell. I do follow her on TikTok. So I was excited to see her collabing with ColourPop but it just didn't deliver on what I was expecting. At 34, we have the two MAC and Stranger Things collab palettes. I love Stranger Things. If it wasn't obvious, I have all of my little Stranger Things Funkos over on my shelf. We have Argyle has been the most recent addition. So there are two palettes in this collection, the Hawkins Class of 1986 palette, which has more of those fun colors and bright pops. And out of the two, you'd think this would be the one that I'd reach for more, but that is just not the case. I really like the color story of this. I find it's very fun. It's very creative. It charges my creative juices. So for that, I do like it. This one is the Void palette. I really like this one as well. I, as you can see, I've reached for this one quite a bit since I've gotten them. I do like these palettes. They are not bad palettes by any means. Just when I was ranking them, I figured I wasn't using them as much as some of the other ones. You'll see that a lot in my ranking. Just because a palette is good, it doesn't mean it's going to rank towards the top. I'm ranking based off of quality, how much I'm using it, how much I'm inspired by it, all sorts of factors. So these are good palettes. They aren't the best quality. MAC just doesn't have my favorite eyeshadow formula, but I don't hate them. I do really like them. They just kind of fell towards the bottom. At 33, we have another ColourPop palette. This is ColourPop and Avatar The Last Airbender. It is such a cute palette aesthetic wise. I loved Avatar growing up. It was one of my favorite shows. And has anyone seen the spoilers about the 2025 release? This palette just did not have the best ColourPop quality and I was a little disappointed in it. These shades, while gorgeous together, just were not what I was expecting for an Avatar palette. The Earth Kingdom row, I felt like pulled more neutral. In camera, this shade looks a little more green than it does in person. I just felt like there was a lot of things I could have done differently. I really like this top inner corner highlight, Water Tribe. I felt like that was gorgeous, but I really felt like they could have done more of like a duochrome for the Red Fire Kingdom and the Air row could have been done a little bit differently. I just was not blown away by this. The quality just wasn't there for me and the color story just didn't represent Avatar as much as I would have liked. However, if you did not watch the show growing up, you might feel differently about the palette. I just feel this way because I'm a little bit of a, a nitpicky girl. At number 32, we have the ColourPop All Amethyst palette. This one came out, I think, at the beginning of the year. They did a bunch of different palettes like Amethyst and Quartz. And overall, I think the color story is really pretty. I love, like I said, a good purple. This reminds me of like Jeffree Star Bloodlust and what that palette was trying to do. But this kind of nailed the color story a little bit more in my humble opinion. Not that I don't love a good Bloodlust palette, but the quality of this just wasn't wasn't superb. I like the shimmers in here, but they take glitter glue and lots of building up to get the opacity I want. And I still feel like I end up going into like a Pat McGrath Astral Blitz shade on top. I like the shades in this one, but I don't feel like I can just use this palette as a standalone palette and love my look every time. I really feel like I have to reach into other purple palettes in my collection to either get the punch I want or the shimmer I want, or just the look I want in general. I do like the colors. It's just, it's more of a matter of quality for me and how much I've reached for it, which is why it's ranking towards the bottom. At number 31, we have another ColourPop palette. This is the In The Limelight palette. And I believe this one came out over the summer. I was so excited about this palette. I love green eyeshadow. I think it's just so pretty. And to have an entire palette dedicated to some of these lime shades just really made my heart happy. I have not used this as much as I thought I would use it. Quality, I don't remember it being terrible. It wasn't ColourPop's best. There are definitely other ColourPop palettes in this video that are ranking much higher. It's not necessarily the color story. It's more of a quality and just my lack of use for it. I feel like this debut shade is just a little out of place. I'm not really sure what to do with that one. 
And then some of these other greens I feel like are very similar. I wish they did like two slightly different variations because I feel like those two matte greens are very similar. It's a cute palette. I do wanna reach for it some more, but because I haven't reached for it a ton, it is ranking towards the bottom. The next set of palettes I'm gonna talk about are more of like the middle ground. There's nothing really wrong with them. They're just palettes I haven't been reaching for a ton. And once we get through the middle ground, we're gonna get through those really good picks and then my top favorites. At number 30, we have another Rem Beauty palette. This is in the shade Baby Doll. And this one is much better quality than Go Go Boots. I was gonna rank these two together, but I felt like I've reached for this one so much on its own that it deserved its own spot in the ranking. I took this one traveling with me over the summer and was able to use it as an everyday palette for the two weeks I was gone and I didn't have any qualms with it. Did I feel like every look I did with this palette looked the exact same? Yes. It Every look I did with this looked the same, but sometimes that's really easy. You just know what look you're gonna do when you pull it out. It's good for everyday use. You don't have to think about your makeup. And the quality of this one, like I said, is much better than the other palette from Rem that I tried. I preferred this one way more. This one, I just felt like there wasn't a whole lot of diversity. That is why it's ranking in the middle. It's good quality. It's a very reliable palette just not a lot of diversity. 29 is gonna surprise some of you. I already know some of you guys are gonna be surprised by 29. Please don't hate me. It is the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. I have been known to love a Natasha Denona palette or two, and I've also been known to love colorful makeup. But this palette, as excited as I was for this, just, I don't know. I was so excited when this palette launched, but then I got it and I just feel like I don't use it. I feel like the color story is gorgeous, but the color payoff is a little lackluster. It takes a lot of building up, which is understandable. It's a pastel palette. Pastels take work, but I just felt like it was too much work for how much I paid for it. She just upped her midi size palettes, I think to $70, $69-$70. They used to be, I believe, $65, so they have gone up in price over the past year. Bruce really got to my skin. I am going to try and keep that covered up. I apologize, I forgot about that. This just didn't do it for me. I really like the color story, which is a shame. It's gorgeous but it just didn't give me what I was hoping for and I just haven't reached for it as much as I thought I would. The packaging is stunning, color story is stunning. I just don't use it. Number 28 might also come as a shock to some people. I've also really come to love the Sigma formula. So at 28, we have the Sigma and Alice in Wonderland collab. This packaging is probably the coolest packaging I own in my entire collection. And I really like the color story of this palette. I like the concept. It's a very approachable way to color. I feel like if you like a good neutral with a pop of color, this is a great palette. And I feel like if you're starting to dabble in color and like a safe route to do so, this is a great option. Sigma has amazing quality. The formula is beautiful. It blends so easy and they just always have really easy to use palettes. However, I feel like as a color lover myself, I either want a neutral look or a colorful look. I don't really do a lot of the neutral with a little bit of color. I feel like it's one or the other. And this palette, I just feel like Aside from the blues, the blues you can do a really cool colorful look, but this whole half of the palette I just feel like is much more neutral than I would prefer. And I feel like no matter what I do with my look, this this palette always just ends up looking a little more subtle than I would prefer. And I know that's definitely not something you hear people say a ton, but this just does not pull the way I would like it to. So for that reason, it is ranking at 20, what are we at, 28? 27 is my Too Faced Better Than Chocolate palette. And honestly, this is a hidden gem. I purchased this right when it came out because I love the chocolate bar palettes. I just think they are so cute. They're so fun. They always smell amazing. And I really like this palette. I don't have anything negative to say about it. I haven't tried all the shades yet, but all the shades I have tried are amazing. I use this as an everyday palette. And to be honest, when I was pulling out palettes to rank in this video, I completely forgot about this one. I was actually watching Morgan Turner's ranking video for the year and I was realizing she pulled out a lot of palettes that I have that I forgot to include in my ranking. And I believe this was one of them. When I realized that I had actually tried this palette and it did come out this year, I haven't used it since I think over the summer when it did come out because I tried so many things in a short period of time. But as I was ranking, I realized I really liked this palette and I really like it for every day. It's super reliable. I love the Too Faced formula. It's long lasting. It's easy to blend. It's very beginner friendly and user friendly if you like something super easy. The reason it is ranking so low is because it just kind of is that middle ground. It's neither special nor terrible. I do like it and I do hope to pull it out again in the future and try and get some more use out of it. 
but for now we are sitting at 27. At 26, I have two of the ColourPop Shore Thing quads. We have the Wait and See quad, which is more of this blue turquoise quad. And we have the Wait and See quad, which is more of the corals and the peachy tones. As a whole, I liked these. I think these were some of the best quads I've tried from ColourPop. The color stories are great. I love monochromatic things because they just make it so easy when I do my makeup. If I weren't ranking these together, the Wait and See quad would definitely rank a lot higher than the Shore Thing quad. I think the Shore Thing quad is gorgeous, but I feel like I run out of creative juices very quickly with this quad, but the wait and see quad, I can do all over monochromatic looks. I also did a look the other day, I'll include pictures, where I did like a graphic liner using this palette and I really liked it. So if we're basing it one at a time, this would definitely rank a lot higher. I think the quality is absolutely amazing, especially for blues. These are really nice quads. I've continued to reach for them after I reviewed them, but they just aren't the best palettes I've tried from the year. So they are ranking more towards the middle. At number 25, we have the Lethal Cosmetics 1UP palette. This is the cutest packaging. I've said that about a couple palettes already. This is a really pretty take on a rainbow palette. It's mostly blues and greens, which I like, but you also have some pinks and purples. I have done some really cute looks with this palette. I really enjoyed the looks that I made out of this one. And in general, I really like the Lethal Formula. I think they're great. They are very pigmented, so they take a little bit of extra work to blend out. And sometimes I just want something a little bit easier. As a whole, I think this palette is gorgeous, but I just didn't create enough looks that I was absolutely in love with to rank it any higher. So it is just ranking towards the middle. 24 is my Urban Decay Naked with Robin Eisenberg palette. And this one is so cute. This one I definitely know got a lot of backlash. This was their holiday palette from this past year. And I can understand where people are coming from. A lot of people were upset because naked palettes are supposed to be naked. And a lot of people were upset because it just wasn't super colorful. I think this is a nice neutral meets colorful palette. Again, kind of like the Sigma and Alice in Wonderland. It is very approachable way to do color. It is gorgeous. The shades are super user friendly. It is laid out super easy. So you can do a neutral look and add a pop of blue, or you can do a blue look out of Papa Neutral. There's a lot of things you can do with this palette. It doesn't give me the insane color payoff that I have in some of my other higher ranking palettes, but it is definitely not a bad palette by any means. Number 23 is my ColourPop and Hocus Pocus 2 All Hallows Eve palette. This palette to me embodies Halloween. This is a true Halloween palette. You have the neutrals, you have the purples, the greens, the oranges. It is the truest Halloween palette in my collection by far. The reason it is ranking more towards the middle is just a quality thing for me. I do really like the color story, and to be honest, this is one of my favorite color stories ColourPop has done, but the quality just doesn't match up to some of my higher ranking ColourPop palettes, and for that reason, I am ranking it more towards the middle. It just isn't the best, but it also isn't even close to the worst. It is gorgeous. I've loved all the looks I've done with it, and I like how it's laid out in rows, so it makes it really easy and cohesive when doing looks. 22 is my ColourPop One and Done palette. When I I did my review on this palette. I remember being extremely pleasantly surprised. I loved the looks I did with the one and done palette. I will link that video down below if you're interested. I really like this palette as a whole. It has neutrals and pinks and pink is my favorite color. So to have a neutral and pink palette is the perfect new everyday palette. I thought it was really great. It wasn't super standout-ish to me. I have reached for it several times and the shimmers in here are quite used but as a whole, it just isn't the best of the best. From here on out, all the palettes that I'm gonna talk about are palettes I really like, and this was really hard for me. So this next selection is more of those really great palettes, but they didn't quite make my top favorites. You are not gonna see a single bad palette from here on out. At number 21, we have an Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, and this is the Nouveau palette. To me, this was ABH's comeback. I thought this was extremely well done. This was the only one out of their recent palettes that have actually inspired me and actually caught my eye. They've done a few different ones. I think they did, it was like the Primrose palette and then the Rose Metals palette. I'm not really sure if those are even the names, but this one is very, very pretty. I love the greens and this was one that ranked a lot closer to the bottom until I went back and reached for it a couple weeks ago and realized I actually liked it and reached for it several times after. This one has really sparked my interest again in the past few weeks. So that is why it is ranking more in the top half of the palettes. It's a great color story. I like that it's green heavy. The olives are great. I feel like a lot of times greens just don't look green on the eye. They pull a little more brown, but these all pull true to green on me. And I also really like the pop of lavender. At number 20, we have the Odin 
Kensai Solmon 2 palette, and this is one of my favorite palettes I've tried this year. I love the color story of this, and this was the first Odin's Eye palette I tried. You will see several other Odin's Eye palettes in this ranking. The reason it is ranking more towards the bottom half of my favorites is because I just haven't used all of the shades, and I feel like there isn't a ton of variety I can do with this one. It's either blues, purples, or yellowy oranges, which there's nothing wrong with that. I've loved every single look I've done with this palette, but I like the versatility in some of the other Odin's Eye palettes I have tried this year. At 19, we have the Jeffree Star Banana Fetish Palette. When I originally reviewed this palette, I did not have the best of things to say about it, but I have found myself reaching for it just for like everyday use several times since I've done that review. And I use this a lot over the summer, especially like August, September. I felt like a lot of these yellow neutrals were just the vibe. And the shades I wasn't super fond of were some of these like darker shades. And honestly, I've just been using other browns in my collection in place of those. But as a whole, I really liked the colors. I felt like maybe these pops of color weren't the best idea in this palette. I felt like they didn't have the best quality or color payoff, but for the most part, all the yellows in here were amazing. I think the color story is gorgeous. The pans being like the octagon shapes. I think it's so fun. It's something so different in my collection and something I didn't think I would enjoy as much as I would. At number 18, we have another Odin's Eye palette. This is the Christmas Eve palette. And this is one of their holiday palettes. They did two limited edition holiday palettes. And like I was saying with the Solmon 2 palette, I really prefer this color story to the Solmon palette. I think it is just so creative, so fun. You have lots of dark grungy colors. And I really like that it's like more of like the grungy cool tones. I really like the duochromes in here, the shifty shades, the shimmers are gorgeous from Odin's Eye always. This just out of all the Odin's Eye palettes I've tried, was not my favorite one this year. I know a lot of people really, really liked it and I'm not discounting that whatsoever. It is a great palette by all, all accounts. It just was not my favorite. At number 17, we have a Nomad palette. I don't think I've had any lower ranking Nomad palettes. If you've been around my channel, you know I love Nomad. The owners are just so sweet. I message them on Instagram regularly and I just think they create the most fun color stories out there. This color story is definitely gorgeous and I know a lot of people ranked this in their top palettes for the year. This just wasn't my vibe compared to some of the other Nomad palettes, but I definitely didn't want to make it any lower because I do love the Nomad quality and I've loved every single look I've done with this palette beyond words. I think they've all been stunning. I always get compliments when I wear Nomad's colors and their shimmers are just out of this world. So it is ranking towards the top half of my palettes, just not in the top 10. At number 16, we have another Odin's Eye palette. This is in collaboration with Angelica and this is such a gorgeous color story. I really liked this palette. When I first got this palette, I wasn't super impressed because I did feel like most of the looks I made were kind of like just grungy green looks. But this shade down here, River, is out of this world. And I've seen so many looks on Instagram that I've recreated with this palette. And since kind of like looking to other people for inspiration and in how they use this palette, I have grown to love this palette immensely. It is one of my favorite palettes in my collection. The shimmers are stunning. I just feel like Odin's Eye and Nomad and all those other indie brands just do shimmers so much better than any mainstream brand. So if you are looking for good shimmers, Odin's Eye is where it's at. Number 15 goes to this hefty guy. This is the Jeffree Star Star Wedding Palette. I originally wasn't going to get this collection. I really am not a fan of huge palettes like this. I just think they overwhelm me. But for whatever reason, I just decided to bite the bullet and get it anyway. <laughs> this is not the most exciting color story that has been released. We have seen lower ranking palettes in this video with better exciting color stories, but I ranked this where it did because I find myself reaching for this all the time for everyday looks. I, like I said, have been gravitating more towards just natural, really quick and easy go-to makeup looks. I just have stopped caring so much about having these big elaborate looks for work. And this is a palette that I reach into all the time for that kind of stuff. And every single look I do with this, I think is gorgeous. My one qualm is I wish there were some lighter or more metallic-y shimmers. I know the whole thing about this palette is having it be more natural, but I wish I had a couple of true Jeffree Star shimmers in here. At number 14, we have the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 2 palette. 
This was another one that originally was ranked a lot lower when I did my initial ranking, but after trying it out over the past few weeks, have decided I absolutely love this palette. I cannot get enough of it. I feel like the reason I ranked it so low is because some of the shimmers were not true to tone, but I have tried some of these lighter shimmers since then, and I think they are amazing. They are the best things in sliced bread. So this palette is ranking much higher. I do think I'm going to continue to get a lot of use out of it, especially in the new year with me cutting back on makeup purchases. This one's definitely gonna get some love. At number 13, we have Sigma New Mod. This is my favorite Sigma palette from the year. I feel like this palette was so well done. I was so excited for it and I don't even know why. It's literally a berries and neutral palette, but for whatever reason, that just made my heart happy. So I decided to bite the bullet and get this one when it came out. I got the entire Sigma New Mod collection, I believe, when it launched and I've loved every single piece of it. There is lipsticks, they are some of my favorites that I still wear, and this palette is just so easy for everyday use. I'm obsessed with Avant Garde, this kind of like bluey shifty shade, but even these other neutrals just make the most perfect, easy neutral looks, and I think it's just a gorgeous palette. The packaging is so cute. It's a shame it's not in my top 10. At number 12, we have Melt Gemini 2. I've reviewed this when this one came out as well, and I believe I gave it a decent review. It is not my favorite palette by any means, and actually now that I'm looking at it, I think I might have today ranked it a little bit lower, but I'm just going off of my ranking that I did last night. Every single day I wake up and these are different. I think the colors in here are gorgeous. There aren't too many shimmers. You only have two shimmers. It's very matte heavy, but you can get a really nice all matte look with it. I feel like all matte looks just are not my thing. I like a nice ratio of mattes to shimmers, but as a whole, this palette is very nice. And at number 11, we have the Nomad Polynesian Paradise palette. Guys, this is one of my favorite rainbow palettes I have ever tried in my life. I think these colors are gorgeous. A lot of these mattes are very creamy. They have almost like a super shock color pop texture. The shimmers are just so stunning. They are so wet looking. You don't even need a glitter glue to make these look good. The reason it is not in my top 10 and just below my top 10, I couldn't tell you because this deserves everything in the world. It is one of my favorite Nomad palettes by far. I think the color story is great. The packaging is very cohesive. I like how the colors pop in this aqua packaging. It is gorgeous and I use this all the time. I used a lot of these oranges for fall looks. These greens are great for Christmas looks. There's not a bad shade in this palette. Some of them like whale or seashell maybe don't have the best color payoff, but they're pastel shades, that's passable. But as a whole, this palette is just insanely beautiful. And with that, we are down to my top 10 picks. If anybody has guesses as to what my top palette is, leave them down below. I would love to see what everyone's guesses are. I did a mid-year ranking, so I'm intrigued to see how people feel that I'm going to rank things. At number 10, we have Teresa is Lethal by Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa is Dead. And this palette, my dudes, is gorgeous. The color story in this one is, to me, a little bit more chaotic than their collab last year. However, I do really like the color story and the reason this is ranking in my top is because my favorite neutral go-to look right now is this top row. This matte brown in the crease, this in the outer corner, this on the lid, it is my current go-to neutral look. I cannot get enough of it. You can even do like a pop pink on the inner corner and I feel like you can even do like some of these pinks and purples with the blue on the lid. There are just a lot of fun options and this one has stretched my creativity a bit so I do like that. For number 10. At number nine, we have ColourPop and Darth Vader. I believe this is just the Darth Vader palette. This is beautiful. It is cool tone neutrals. You have some pops of red. You have the red, the burgundy. And can I tell you my favorite shade in this entire palette is this black. You can tell it is very loved. I've used this black so many times this year. When I've used this palette, I've used kind of this red burgundy in the crease. I've done the black on the lid, topped it with a Pat McGrath Astral Blitz shade, and that is Chef's Kiss Perfection. It is such a gorgeous palette. And honestly, if you would have told me at the beginning of the year, this would be one of my most used palettes from the year, would have laughed at you because this does not look like the most exciting palette, but it has made my makeup heart very happy. If you saw my mid-year palette ranking, I did it, I believe, around June or July. I ranked the ColourPop and Star Wars palette as the top pick. In this ranking, it is ranking number eight. The reason being is because it is still one of my favorite color stories to come out of this year. I think this palette is so well done. I love the artwork on the palette. The color story is so fun. You have the dark side, the good side. There is a lot of things you can do with this palette. The only reason it is not ranked higher is because all the other palettes you're gonna see, 
that came out this year that I've tried really gave this palette a run for its money. I've loved every single palette that you are going to see above here. It was so hard to rank these. This is such a fun palette. I'm so creatively inspired by it and it just makes my heart so happy. I'm saying that about all my palettes, but you know, I love makeup. At number seven, we have the Nomad Hudson Valley palette. This palette is stunning. You have three shimmers. It is definitely matte heavy. You have a warm side, a shimmer side, or a shimmer row, and then a cool tone matte side. Since this palette has come out, every single time I've wanted an all matte cool tone neutral look, this is the palette I'm reaching for. I think this row is gorgeous. These three shadows, while it's not much, create the most perfect cool tone look on my eyes, and I am in love. I also really like the punch of some of these yellows and reds and oranges. The shimmers are gorgeous. There is not a bad shade in this palette. I constantly want to reach for this one, but have to remind myself I own other palettes. It is that good. I highly recommend this to anybody that's wanting to try Nomad. It is literally the most perfect palette from Nomad. At number six, we have the Michaela and Glamlight Part 2. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it because last time I did, I got a lot of angry comments from the East Coast. I apologize to any East Coasters that I offended with my lack of pronunciation because I am from the Midwest and I have lived on the West Coast for half my life. This is one of the most beautiful color stories I have ever seen. I love how cohesive it is. You have a blue row, a purple row, a green row. These top two rows with shimmers of any color under the sun. It is a gorgeous palette. It is a bit overwhelming for me because it is such a large palette and I prefer smaller, more curated color stories, but this has the most beautiful cohesive color story. I could stare at this palette all day. I love it. I've loved every look I've done with it. I think this collection was extremely well done. I definitely want to try more of Glam Light in the future. This is the only Glam Light palette I own currently. And also you have the fun glitter in the in the cover. At number five, we have Shroud Cosmetics and Batty Bean, the Hollow Bean palette. Y'all know I love a good spooky thing. I love a spooky themed palette. And this is the most beautiful spooky palette. I have loved all the colors in here. You have some duochrome shifty shades, which are gorgeous. You have the greens, you have some blacks, really deep shades. You can create really vampy, grungy looks. And I like the contrast in this palette from light to dark and all the fun textures and colors you get as well. At number four, we have the Odin's Eye Merry Christmas palette. This is my favorite Odin's Eye palette in my collection. The color story in this is just so phenomenal. There is so much variety in this palette. You can go neutral, you can go green, you can literally do it all with this palette. I'm obsessed and these shimmers in here are just out of this world. They are so gorgeous, so pigmented, so buttery and wet looking. There is not a single bad shade in this palette. I don't think you can get this palette anymore, but if you didn't, I am so sorry because it is the best palette I have tried in the universe. I can confidently say without a doubt, hands down, that even though this is number four in the ranking, this is the best palette I've tried all year. The only reason I'm ranking the other three palettes higher than this is because I used them more than this one. This is still relatively new to my collection. I've only had this for a month or two and the other palettes I've used consistently the entire year or most of the year. So that is why they are ranking a little bit higher. At number three, we have the Melt Gemini palette. This is the original Gemini palette. It was re-released this year with the Gemini 2 palette. So although it is not a new palette per se, I didn't try it until this year. This has gone with me so many places. I've taken this traveling. I use it as an everyday palette. I used it a lot this fall and also in the spring when it came out because I love a good green look for spring. This is very loved. The quality is just superb. Melt quality is just amazing. I think Melt does a really great job with their formula, especially their mattes. Even though there's only two shimmers, I don't feel like this palette is lacking anywhere, which is a really big deal for me because I really like an equal amount of shimmers to mattes. I like a nice variety, but I really don't feel like this palette is lacking in any direction. At number two, we have the Pat McGrath and Bridger Chin Diamond of the First Water, I believe is what this palette is called. This, if I'm remembering correctly, actually came out at the end of 2021, but I didn't really receive it until January of 2022 so that is when I tried it. It is actually the palette I'm wearing on my eyeballs today. I used every single shade in this palette. It is by far one of the most stunning Pat McGrath palettes I own. I really like her six pans. I think they are curated so great. 
there isn't a single bad shade in here you have like this gelée or gelée i don't even know how you say it kind of this baked formula with the two reds you have a matte an astral blitz shade and then two of her regular metallic -y shimmer shades you have a lot of different formulas in a small palette and i love the selection that she gave i have reached into this palette specifically for this blue shade more times than i can count this is my most used astral blitz shade in my entire pat mcgrath collection and this palette i've had significantly less time than any of my other ones i think this palette is just absolutely beautiful could not have asked for a better palette and of course who doesn't love bridgerton and at number one my favorite palette most top ranked palette of the year we have the nomad provence palette i don't know what it is about this palette but this color story just speaks to my soul. I think it is so well done. It is one of my favorite color stories, if not my favorite from Nomad. You have this lovely row of shimmers. All the shimmers in here are just beautiful. This yellow in particular is just absolutely mind blowing. I love this for monochromatic looks. I think when I did my review and my looks, I also mixed some of the like the yellows and purples. I did a lot of different looks with this and I feel like every time I look at this palette, I wanna do something different with it. This palette I believe came out over the summer and the reason it is ranking number one is because I have used this more than any of the other palettes I've used this year. There are already massive dips in a lot of these shadows. The embossing is completely gone on a lot of these shadows and I have used the absolute crap out of this since I have purchased it. I, as you can see, have tried over 40 palettes this year and for me to sit there and wanna reach for a palette repeatedly to the point where I pulled this out of my shop, my stash, just to put it back in like a week later because I missed it that much. Like that says something about the palette. This is definitely a standout palette to me. I'm gonna continue to use it in the future. I know it. One of my favorite palettes, the best palette I've tried this year. And with that, I have talked your guys' ear off about palettes long enough. I'm gonna go get a snack. I hope you guys do the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I know it's a little bit on the longer side, but definitely let me know which palettes you tried, what your favorite palette was. If you've ranked palettes, let me know so I can go watch your ranking because I've been binge watching ranking videos over the past 24 hours and with that I will see you guys all in the next one bye friends